So first of all, we are going to start to unwind the warp thread. This is a cotton thread and is wound up in a butterfly. You're going to pull one end, the end that is wrapped around the center. It's already folded in half, so once you get the center around, you can just shake it out. So it won't get knotted up. And then you're going to thread the tapestry needle with the warp thread. And so you're gonna want the tapestry needle to be at that center point where, but not exactly in the center, we want one side to be a little bit longer than the other. And the reason we're doing that is just easier to manage because it is a long piece of thread. So we're gonna grab our loom, and when you look at the loom, think of it like a wheel. And we're gonna be putting spokes on the wheel with our warp thread. Now with the warp, we want the tension to be pretty taut. The warp tension is taut. And when we do the weft, it's not really tensioned. So you're gonna start at space one. So there's 23 openings around your wheel. You're gonna visualize this being space one and it goes all the way around to 23. And when you warp your loom, you're gonna be wrapping on both the front and the back of your loom, either in a clockwise or counterclockwise motion. It doesn't matter which way. I'm gonna go clockwise because I'm right-handed, so I think intuitively if you're right-handed, you do the same way, but if you're left-handed, you may go in the opposite direction, whichever is most comfortable for you. You're going to hold the warp so that it doesn't slip out. And you're gonna leave this tail. It's gonna be a little over a foot long, be maybe about a foot and a half, foot and a half. And you're going to count over to opening 13. This is gonna complete our first warp. So this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And right there, you're gonna go down over the top, through the back, and you'll see that there's two threads. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pull the one side out and you'll have to do this periodically. You'll have to loosen up so that one side gets a little bit longer each time because you don't want two warp threads to get stuck. So you're gonna come up and around to two and you'll see a V, so there's a warp on the front and a warp on the back. And when you come down, you're gonna come down at 14. You'll notice there's an X here now. And I'm pulling it so it stays taut. And then I'm gonna come up at three. It's doubling up a little bit, so I'm gonna pull a little bit out. You'll also notice there's two warps, actually there's four warps on the front and there's four warps on the back. There's X on the back and X on the front. When you come around up at three and you're gonna come down at 15. Then you're gonna come up at four and down at 16. Come up at five down at 17, come up at six, down at 18, come up at seven, down at 19, come up at eight, down at 20, try to keep even tension. There should be a little spring on the front and the back. Come up at nine, come down at 21. Up at 10, down at 22. Up at 11, down at 23. And so when you get to this point, you're almost all the way around, but you'll notice that there's one warp thread that needs to still be completed on the 
front and the same on the back. But otherwise, there's spokes on your wheel on both the front and the back. The next part you're gonna do is you're gonna finish this last warp thread. Now, you, there's no really space to put it over here, but what you're gonna notice is this triangle, this space right in here is directly across and it is smaller than all the other triangles. You're gonna slide it right under there. Pull tapestry needle back towards the same direction that you came. And all the threads will start to come towards the center. Just pull a little tight. And then what you're gonna do is start to weave around to secure your warp thread. You're gonna go down and then over, down and then over. It doesn't matter which warp thread you pick up first. You, you're gonna go either in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. And you're gonna go around twice at least. And we're gonna secure this by doing a half hitch knot around one of the warp threads. We're gonna take the tapestry needle off. We're gonna have a bit of a tail and it will get in the way. So I would go ahead and Make it shorter so it doesn't get caught up in the weaving. And then you're gonna flip this over on this side. And the same thing, you're gonna need one more warp thread to complete those spokes on a wheel. But before we do that, this is a perfect time to insert the crystal into the loom because we've got this one piece missing here and it just makes it a lot easier to fit your citrine crystal right in there, your new friend. And once you do that, you're going to go ahead and thread the needle again using the bunny ear method. And you'll notice that there one, there's one triangle that's smaller than all the rest and it's actually directly across from where you're missing the one warp thread. You're going to tuck your tapestry needle under that in between your crystal and the warp threads and you're going to pull the needle up back through the same direction. The threads will start, start to draw in and you're going to again weave around a few times going over, under, over, under. Then you're gonna secure your warp thread with a half hitch knot. And then you can just cut the tail off. And now your crystal is in between both the front and back warps. You know, give yourself a little pat on the back because that wasn't easy and you just did it. So congratulations. Okay, now you're gonna use your yarn, your hand spun yarn. And this is a pretty long piece. So I would encourage you to cut this in half or in thirds because that way it'll be easier to work with. If it's too long, it just gets it's just hard to manage, and if it's too short, you have to keep changing. So we love our citrine vibes. It links the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus. 
I think this is already starting to work for me. It brings courage and fortitude in the face of obstacles. So we're gonna go ahead, now that we have warps on the front and the back, we're gonna to try to line them up so that we're weaving the front and the back warps together instead of separately. Instead of using these openings here like we did before with the warp, with the weft, we're gonna be weaving in and out between the spokes. We're gonna be using these openings here. So it doesn't matter where you start, you can come up for both the front and the back warps. And you can secure this yarn with a half hitch knot just to make sure it won't fall out. It's not necessary. It just gives that extra security. So we're up through here and then we're gonna go down through both the front and the back. And you can go counterclockwise or clockwise, doesn't matter. Now the crystal isn't embedded into the woven piece yet, but we're starting to do that. So you can just let your crystal, place it wherever you want, and you can hold it with your thumb and your index finger to make sure it stays in place. Okay, I want it there. So I'm already reminded of the meditation that we were doing in the last video. At my core, I feel the warmth of the inner sun, which radiates outward and expresses itself in my relationships, work, and life. The sun is this, one of the main elements of the solar plexus chakra. And you think of the sun, you think of warmth, you know, we really do have the power within us to have, to radiate our own light outward. And I think this is a great reminder. One thing that I've always done when I talk to people on the phone is make sure that I'm smiling because he, even though they can't see you, the way that you sound, you sound happier. You sound more bright, you sound more upbeat when you're smiling. And I think people like to be around other people that are happy and joyful and smiling. And you know, this is a great meditation or project to do if you're perhaps wanting to get better at your confidence. It's confidence is something that I had to work on. It doesn't come natural to me. So Hey, when we're happy and it's sunny outside, it's a little bit easier to be confident. So I'm starting to change direction because I like having my crystal down a little bit lower towards the loom in this case. So you can change direction at any time. And so now what I'm gonna end up doing is going around like this and then coming back around and going this way and coming back around this way, sort of in a C shape or a U shape. So I think a great affirmation for the solar plexus and for this weaving project. Now that we've gone around the crystal a few times, this project really does get a little bit more easier and you're in a flow state now. You know what you're doing, you know what direction you're going in. And the solar plexus is all about confidence. 
I am worthy of love, kindness, and respect, regardless of what I have done. So we can secure this by using a half hitch knot. Another thing we can do to hide the yarn is slide it through up and through the web threads like that. And just simply cut that off here. And then we just have one more design element around the edge. Figure out where you want the top to be. I think I'm gonna use this one as the top and you just start here and you're gonna weave around the openings again. Leave a bit of a tail here. All right, and so Then we finish this part of the mobile that can either be standalone. You can tie a little knot on the top and hang this alone on a doorknob or rear view mirror or dresser drawer. Or we can connect it to the rest of our chain that we're making with all the other chakras. Well, thank you so much. Let me know what you think. Let me know, send me um, your feedback at info at sizhandmade.com. Love to hear from you.